Hello and welcome to our first video tour of Paints Hill. Today we start at the beginning of Charles Hamilton's work of art. Here to tell you more is Paints Hill guide Graham Dash. Charles Hamilton created Paynes Hill at a time of great change in the design of landscape gardens. This change led away from the ordered and geometric gardens to a natural looking landscape. Hamilton also employed a method of concealment and surprise. And this starts right from the beginning of our walk. As you reach the top of the hill and walk towards the bastion or fir walk, a view opens up before you. This view takes you across the vineyard on the slope below, the eastern arm of the lake, the river mole that forms the southern boundary of Paynes Hill and on across the countryside to the North Downs. The fir trees form natural picture frames for a series of 3D landscape paintings. Current two and a half acre vineyard represents about a quarter of the area of original vineyards planted by Charles Hamilton in the 1750s. The area of lake below Fir Walk was not created until about 1762, just prior to Charles Hamilton's sale of Paynes Hill. The length of Fir Walk provides a changing view of the landscape to the south of Paynes Hill. The smaller fir trees seen between the mature trees have been planted to eventually replace the older trees. A number of seats are positioned along Fir Walk so that you may sit and appreciate the view. Continuing along Fir Walk, we approach the entrance to the amphitheatre. This is a grassed open space and named for its tiered planting of evergreen shrubs. Turning right into the amphitheatre, a cork oak sits in the southeast corner, a possible Hamilton era tree. Alongside it is a modern reproduction of Gian Bologna's Rape of the Sabine statue. The original statue being sold as scrap in the early 1950s. Turning back the way we came, another surprise awaits. The Gothic temple, which was built by 1761 and became the first folly to be restored in the 1980s, by the Paynes Hill Park Trust. Although giving the appearance of being built of stone, it is in fact a wooden structure and rendered to look like stone. The Gothic temple provides the opening to a further surprise this is an extensive view down a grassy slope to the lake. Grotto Island, the Five Arch Bridge, and the Turkish tent on the hill beyond. On the right hand side may be seen the great cedar, a cedar of Lebanon, almost certainly a tree planted in Charles Hamilton's time. The Gothic temple is ten-sided with five open and five panelled gaps. The open gaps ensuring that you only look at the views that you are supposed to see. Three towards the lake, one along the path back to the amphitheatre and the statue, and one along the fir walk path.
The slender buttresses of the Gothic temple hold up a painted fan vaulted ceiling. Thank you for joining us. Next time we'll be looking at the Crystal Grotto. See you then.